Hey guys, my name is uh, Robin. Back in 2012, I started looking into ab uh, ab areas of abnormal psychology to understand exactly what was going on in the mind of the people who I had continued to attract into my life. Uh, people I refer to as antisocial malignant personalities who uh, cause destructive effects. Also reasons why I allowed them into my life. How that's related to childhood and so on and so forth. Now there's that and then um, a number of years into that I got into Nisha, Freedom of Nisha trying to understand what he was talking about and his teachings and his warnings um, and then it became clear this uh, whole Jordan Peterson thing uh, came out the whole red pill thing came out and um, understanding what he was talking about so uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say what I'm going to offer you is 100% true because I, I think it's important to open the door to any criticism but I believe what I have to offer is what I believe is a very accurate understanding of uh, first of all the reason the political correctness has been applied a little understanding behaviors and traits and where they come from of uh, people like Black Lives Matter in uh, what the way they're behaving also uh, increasingly chaotic and uh, very bizarre news stories taking over the Western world why that is and uh, what the idea behind that is and also to understand uh, the mentality of the people doing it what they is going through their mind um, how to understand what is uh, they are projecting their their perception of their, their thought of the, of the political correctness onto you and how to basically deconstruct what they're saying very quickly and shut them up which is essential and also expose how they are thinking in the first place so I'm gonna write a list in the uh, video comment section um, of some pretty essential things you have to have a no, you, do not, you do have to have a complex understanding so just a, a relatively right understanding um, uh, understanding into so first of all basic Nietzsche uh, his warnings about the abandonment of religion in the western world and how this uh, in the future the, this what he perceived as a, a new religion would take form incorporating at times what he referred to the devil side of man which was his expansion of what Dostoevsky was talking about in how this new religion what basically turned out to be ideology uh, under the belief that the people of this uh, following this uh, new religion would be righteous they would carry out disastrous behaviors and allow catastrophes to their fellow human being on a large scale he also warned how this would uh, be how this would be uh, dealt with with the uh, establishment of further more uh, new religions um, and how it go from one extreme to the other until people shut up and listen to science to explain the humanity and the world around them rather than believe in ideology as an explanation and uh, it, it also warned about the, the, the mass disasters that would come about that and of course Nietzsche in the end he, he was walking through the street one day and he, um, he, really, he saw the instance with the, the man and the horse and he realised he was correct and uh, unfortunately became it sounds like he became quite psychotic so um, Nietzsche quotes on oh, Nietzsche understanding also there is a dissect and also the full interview on YouTube of a guy called Yuri Besmanov who was interviewed in the 1980s uh, I believe on American television he is um, an ex-KGB ex -KGB operative he explains he goes into quite good detail about how 15% of the KGB budget was uh, used on espionage 85% of the budget was used on psycho developing psychological warfare techniques known as uh, ideological subversion to project onto the enemy, in other words the western world to further bring it to, uh, to undermine it and to bring it to a state of uh, total confusion and what he said would uh, eventually result in uh, the, the mar people indoctrinated Marxists or the social justice would take over I'm not going to say that's going to happen because uh, it's, it's quite a dark idea but what we're increasingly seeing I, I'll try to explain how it's linked to that so there's that so first of all these people what they believe in is what's referred to as social justice so I'll describe some bits about how that why I believe that how that works so it operates on the basis of that it will create this utopia and uh, this will be based on identifying or um, helping or what, what would you refer to as representing people from 
the oppressed, the working class, who are oppressed by the, the bourgeois, the, the upper class, and also the, the identity of uh, women, uh, racial minorities, homosexuals, um, and other expansions. Now, first of all, the original identity politic was from Karl Marx. I think it was in his book, Capital. And uh, his deconstruction of uh, what the family unit was, he said that the because the father goes out and is the breadwinner, that is allowing him to oppress the woman who is staying at home and uh, looking after the kids. And uh, he get, he went on to further give examples of what he perceived of why why if any instance would occur where uh, the father would abuse the mother or the children in what, whatever format that would be, it was because he was the breadwinner. This was in fact the fault of society or capitalism. Now people didn't really know much about psychology at the time. Uh, even though they agreed at the time, didn't know much better, they still agreed today. Okay, some basics to understand about Western society, in case you didn't know already. Uh, what we got is uh, uh, um, empirical or sacred. Right at the top, uh, if anything more important than life itself, is truth. Um, and we understand if we have to tr apply the truth to everybody, you have to break it right down to the individual. And that is because what is 100% uh, true to me is different to what is 100% true to you, and so on and so forth. And uh, we also accept that um, we are um, individual human beings. That is true. Now, uh, that's an individual society, but um, ideology, uh, what well, on the far right, and also the Marxism, is collectivist so you get um, group politics they put the collective above the individual so they they regard people as collectively the same they refer to people as collectively the same from the group okay so social justice if you if you hear about this group uh, people who use this identity politics who also use class politics if you listen to their arguments analyze it, deconstruct it and take it apart if you understand them it Everything they are saying, if it was true, would have to mean that everybody from the group that they are referring to would have to be the same. So whether they are referring to themselves, so for example they say I is a black female, lesbian, white male, whatever. If that were true, what they are saying about that, applying their identity to their, their thoughts, their behaviour, their experience, whatever, it would mean that whether there be something about that identity that would cause, be causation for such thing. But if that were true, they'd all have to be the same. So, um, for example, women this, men that, gays this, blacks this. Uh, it's just, it's the same. This is this bit. Uh, it's to a totalizing degree, as if it's some form of science, but it's not. Because so, uh, going back to what we believe true in Western society is uh, people are individuals, individual human beings. So, this idea that people are the same is not true, but. Um, you get stereotypes, judging people collectively, but this idea you can apply stereotypes across the board, again it's not true, because some people always live up to stereotypes, but it's just, you can't apply it across the board. But anyway, this, this identity politics, um, this what it's doing then is judging people collectively. Now if we revert back to the truth, we understand that judging people collectively is discrimination. Okay, so um, if you listen to people who uh, do good understanding or observation of what became what's become known as the woke or the people who cite such a this social justice is that everything they they say they are against they tend to do themselves they are they contradict themselves massively uh, for example they say they are against racism the most against racism yet they judge people collectively based upon their race which of course going back to truth we understand is discrimination so they say they are the, the most against sexism, they judge men collectively, they judge themselves, if they were women they judge them collectively. It's all discrimination, and that's truth. Now what's interesting, and at times what I believe to be quite disturbing, is the fact that even though they are contradicting themselves, it seems they don't really mind or are aware of it, because whatever there's truth on one level, what everybody else is on level with, but they believe this social justice is actually regarded to be higher than truth. So whatever truth you explain to them, you, they could be answerable to, to the truth, but they always believe they could go back and retract and achieve higher and do better 
with social justice and that is extremely important to them so for example what what's become true in the news no matter how true you present to them of which you can prove it it doesn't matter because they believe they can do better they will have to do better with social justice so what i've just explained is this social justice entirely based on judging people collectively so that's entirely that's discriminating discriminating against everybody it did not really sound great but they will contradict themselves on the belief that uh, it's essential to achieve the social justice so another thing they teach with this social justice is that there is this uh, oppression uh, it could be from uh, the bourgeois, the, the, the rich, the uh, straight white men, or um, well, that's basically capitalism or society. Marxist critical, th Marxist critical theory says that society is responsible for suffering, but it's, it's not quite true. What is, what is actually true is uh, that you yourself, through your own faulty behaviour and uh, uh, flawed actions, uh, uh, cause your own problems um, mostly. Now, sometimes you get things bad people say for example they're abusing you but in terms of how you deal with it and go on to deal with it that is your choice but anyway the Marxist critique is that um, society is responsible for suffering and um, so okay so uh, now this this under this teaching of this uh, oppression idea uh, it teaches it puts it installs in the mind of these people what is known as uh, the, the victim mentality so if you ever looked into anything like cognitive behavioral therapy or you ever experience people in life who are antisocial and malignant uh, and who, um, for example, they are offloading their problems onto you and they, they don't want to change, they will display what is this, this victim mentality. So the thing about the victim mentality is, first of all, whatever is going on in the head that's causing them a problem, what is going on in their life that's causing a problem, they will put onto you. Uh, they will not accept responsibility over their actions, they don't believe it's their responsibility. What they do is they point the finger elsewhere and uh, they also reject the idea that they need to change. So, for example, if you're dealing with people who have a, may have addiction problems, you talk to them, do you want to go to rehabilitation? And they say, ah, uh, uh, I don't know. They'll, they'll play out, this, this victim mentality will teach them to, to make out they don't need to change. Now, what has seemed to be interesting from pretty much everyone observing the left at the moment, and for some time, it's increasingly, it seems they are becoming uh, what people are going to regressing further into themselves. They are becoming worse, which they themselves are at fault. So, for example, they are becoming more radical. They are, it seems they have abandoned liberalism. They are going into Marxism, uh, communism, socialism, and uh, anarchism. Um, it also seems that um, they are further pointing the blame in other people. They are pointing the finger elsewhere. They are further, it seems, uh, increasingly abandoning any idea that they could be wrong. Now, what's interesting uh, is around 2016 Brexit vote, uh, most of my life I was a liberal, but I got sick of the double standards, the hypocrisy, and the identity politics. Of course, that's all was judging people collectively, it's just all discrimination. So I left the left. I myself am most, most conservative. It's irrelevant, you'd have to be conservative uh, to, 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 to understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so the victim mentality. Now, what's interesting, sometimes you find this in people who say have addiction problems, but the main people I've experienced in my life who have the victim mentality is uh, if you look into some understandings of uh, abnormal psychology, particularly what's known as the cluster B personality disorder. Uh, also, sometimes observed in a cluster A personality disorder known as a uh, paranoid personality disorder. Okay, so the cluster B uh, personality disorder are known as the erratic behaviour, erratic mood, and erratic cognitive thought. They may at times cause a lot of drama in people's lives. I think, um, so first of all, there's, there's antisocial personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder, um, histrionic personality disorder, and um, borderline personality disorder. Um, they incorporate a number of traits. They all at times incorporate the victim mentality. And also um, sometimes throughout have problems with empathy. Borderlands can uh, experience other can be more empathy than um, normal reduction in empathy. Uh, they're all different personality disorders. All people who have these personality disorders are of course individual human beings and to be judged individually. 
um, antisocial personality disorder that's a pervasive pattern of law breaking, disregard for the rights, rules, regulations, disregard for the rights and well-being of those around them. Uh, now they can feel empathy for what is like their inner circle of friends or family, but basically people outside of that they they don't feel empathy for. They are uh, often described as sociopaths, psychopaths. I think it's about uh, seventy-one percent to seventy-two percent of the prison population have antisocial personality disorder. They can be very aggressive, very violent, very manipulative. Um, yeah, they're, they're basically very destructive, very imposing, and they're very dysfunctional. They can often be very promiscuous, um, often uh, excessive drinking, alcohol, uh, drug use. But anyway, there's also a histrionic personality disorder, which is a personality disorder about being the centre of attention. Sometimes these people get referred to as drama queens. They generally, they like to constantly be the sense of attention. They do not like it when they're not the sense of attention. They display pretty shallow uh, emotion. Uh, they can come across most of the time as not being very genuine. Uh, okay, so pretty shallow emotions. Uh, they can t they can become very convinced of what people are like just quite by note by meeting them very quickly. Um, they can also they often tell a lot of lies. They have a really strong sense of victimhood. They often talk about being when they've been victimised. Um, also, they can have problems with empathy. Uh, uh, narcissists and antisocial are worse with empathy. Uh, also, um, some borderlines. It's not that they don't feel empathy. Sometimes they can feel too much. Sometimes they're not much at all. It's on the borderline of, of different things. So. Um, what happens is um, they think often in this what's referred to as a uh, black and white thinking. So you take you observe two different things. First of all, there are demographics out there for, that show disproportionate amounts of people of various identity and uh, disproportionate amounts of people of certain class. The thing about demographics is it's not just down to identity and class, you also find demographics on things like hair colour, eye colour, height, weight, um, interest, likes, you could find demographics on uh, disproportionate amounts of favourite football teams, uh, sort of uh, music taste, whatever, it, it can be anything, it could be loads, it could be lots of, lots of things. Identity politics and class politics teaches you to look on a superficial basis and judge via identity and class to a totalizing degree and not just not just say that is the observation but interestingly enough also say that is a causation so for example we have over recent times the uh, incident with George Floyd unfortunate death in police custody now obviously he was black that was the observation he happened to be black but the people who believe in this uh, social justice uh, believe that they had to attain this social justice above truth. The truth was that it's black. What's also the truth is just because it's black does not mean that was actual causation. It's probably unlikely. Any truth that existed out there, for example, showing um, demographics where uh, statistics are, uh, instead show that majority of people who died in US police custody were white, that was the truth apparently but uh, people didn't look into that because they had to say social justice because they will always believe social justice is, is much more important than truth okay so uh, the, the cluster bees uh, many of them in terms come to totalizing conclusions about two very different things and compare them say they're exactly the same so if you've ever been in, a, uh, in an emotionally abusive relationship with uh, antisocial personality disorder they will often uh, uh, do do what's called a, a technique called gaslighting. If you've ever looked into emotional abuse in relationships, you'll know what gaslighting is. And the, the idea of gaslighting is to basically, it's a form of mental abuse to make the other person believe in a sense of self and reality. That's not true. The more the lies repeated, the more these people believe it, and it can lead to mental breakdowns. Now that's that's interesting because the the the, the warning is I, I believe that the, the further this political correctness goes on, the more intense it, if it gets. If that happens, it can lead to uh, causing people to become uh, increasingly mentally ill. This was the warning of the what happened when Marxism took over the, the Bolsheviks. Um, the crimes and atrocities that the Bolsheviks were doing, particularly towards women and girls, um, really started to upset the Germans. Uh, it, they they started to become mentally ill. And the psychologist Carl Jung 
uh, uh, noted in an um, interview in the 1950s. He said, uh, based upon what he was experiencing as early as the year 1919, people coming in, in into his practice, he said at that point he uh, he knew Hitler was coming, and that would be the response to the, the, the atrocities committed by the Bolsheviks. Funnily enough, uh, my great great grandparents were Russian, came to North UK with a load of other Russians to escape the, the, the Bolshevik atrocities. Now, anyway, I'll try, I'm trying to stick this together. I, you'll have to forgive me for being very disorganised. It's, 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 it's a funny thing. But um, now this this whole taking two very different things, saying it's totalising to the same thing, like I said, the, the gaslighting with antisocial and uh, and uh, you sometimes get this borderline personality disorder. Two, they'll take two very different things and say that they're the same. Now this is what's I known as black and white thinking. You find this a lot with the social justice warriors. You find this a lot with uh, as a way of perception with this social justice, applying this social justice to the world around them. But I think the posture term for black and white thinking is a dichotomy. Thinking is like a dichotomy. Okay. So, um, more into this gaslighting thing. Now, political correctness, when people are putting out political correctness, I'd say there's nothing else like it apart from it's exactly like gaslighting. Say, so you are that, you are this, they, there's this accusation which is basically not true. Um, but yeah, it's uh, interesting. Um, now, narcissists, uh, if there's some narcissists, sadistic narcissists, cover narcissists, when they are gaslighting they what's interesting is they reveal what they believe about themselves deep down and project that onto you the target so they they can say they feel they, they are they feel they're a psychopath they they say they are paranoid they say you're paranoid you're a psychopath now this is important to understand because now i'm going to see try to establish with you this um number of instances over recent times where Key, key points of applying political correctness has just produced such bizarre and disastrous effects. <sighs> okay, so, uh, there's what became known as the Rotherham incident in the UK uh, a while ago. It came out on the news. Uh, some people in America heard about that. Um, it also became aware of an increasing amount of time that it wasn't just in Rotherham that it was happening with the grooming gangs. It's happening up and down the country. Not, not quite in every major town city. Not almost every major town and city. It happened a lot. Okay, so the main reason it happened, most people agree, is because it was allowed to happen. It quickly caught on between a minority of people who, mostly Muslim, who um, were wanting to groom the, the underage kids, the, the underage girls, for gang rape and uh, prostitution and uh, sex slavery and sex trafficking. Okay, so the reason it got so bad was because people who sat um, as MP in, in, on the, in the constituency on, in the town where it happened, they were presented right from the beginning information from the working class stating what was happening there. First of all, they went they, they were talking about the, the crime and violence, what was happening from the immigrants, uh, and they were talking about the grooming gangs. Now, applying this using identity politics, it's saying that not just uh, the, the disproportionate amounts that it was minority groups uh, understand, perceiving this identity politics would say that actual causation is being a, to be born a minority group. Now that's not true. If you've ever listened to Jordan Peterson or looked into what's known as the Gini coefficient, uh, it's all explained crime and violence. Also, it's important to understand that what Labour's main policy was with working class communities was to take these social housing, um, divide it, 50% was to be taken up by new wave of immig uh, immigrants. From what I believe, so what they're playing was a game of divide and conquer of the working class. So because of the 50% change in demographic from the, the immigration, they, that would uh, that would in altering the demographic. Whatever happened uh, whilst uh, the Labour were in power of that town, they will continue to be in power in years to come because the demographic that had altered would, generally speaking, be Labour voters. Okay, so they the, the way they lay out the social housing, it's segregated. It's have like tribes. So any understanding what's known as the Gini coefficient, you have uh, status of one community and uh, status low commu another community down there. So say people from the low status community, seeing the higher status community, containing higher status things, would then come into the community and commit crime and violence. Uh, so if ever any low low status life, you antisocial men existed in the immigrant community, 
they're all put together because it was segregated, which the the, the other communities, predominantly white working class communities, where the young girls were, they were it was also it's next, right next door. So because of that, it, it, if it was ever could get as bad as it could, it was going to, and that was because of failed labour policy and segregating the the social housing. And anyway, they, the working class kept writing letters to MPs, calling the police, saying what was happening. Now, of course, what they're saying was very unpleasant and disagreeable, it turned, but it turned out it was true. But yet it was just allowed to happen. It, it, it was allowed to happen on such a large scale, and it was eventually covered up by um, people in child protective services, covered up by the police. So, right, this, this is the idea I have about what is happening in the minds of the people who allow this to happen. So first of all, I think I mentioned, I may, I may mention before that truth is sacred in Western society. But people who believe in social justice believe that social justice is actually higher than truth, more empirical. It's more important to attain social justice with what's going on. Whatever could be presented as truth, you could hold these people accountable as truth. Yeah, but social justice is more important. Okay, so. They also, the way they interpret the world, the only way they know how to is with this group politics. So the fact that the working class were saying um, disproportionate amounts of immigrants were causing the crime, the, the grooming gangs were happening, the people who sat on board in charge of uh, MPs in the town, the only way they know how to analyze it is do this whole black and white thinking of not just saying the, the, the disproportionate amounts, but also to say the actual causation was to, uh, to say to be born uh, the minority groups, in other words, Muslims. Uh, that most of them happen to be Muslims. So what that meant created um, a thought in their mind that if they were to accept what the working class was saying was true, it would have to mean that they would they, they would respond by saying that they were judging them collectively. Now that created then the the actual racist belief in the mind of the the person who was being told about this. Whatever racism does or does not exist in the working class or anyone else out there, um, the actual, to a total line, to a true degree, the racist belief uh, was created in the mind of people, often not just the MP, but often people out there listening to the the, 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 the information that you are telling them. Okay, so it's in, in their thought, in their mind. Now, that's a thought that belongs to them. That is their responsibility. Now. What is also uh, come out of this? I was talking about the uh, victim mentality. So first of all, there's the taking your problems in your head and projecting them onto the other person, making their your problems to the, the, the other person's problems. Uh, do not accept responsibility over them. Uh, in terms of who is to blame, you blame you, you you point the blame at other people. You play on this victimhood, and then you also reject the need to change. Now, what had happened then is, with this political correctness thought, this racist thought in the head of the mind of the person who is listening to what the person is saying, they then uh, project it onto the other person, they um, blame the other person, not them, they uh, also um, do it as if they're playing on this sense of victim, you can't say that, that's racist, and they also say, for example, um, they, they deny, they, they reject this idea that they need to change. Okay, now this is um, I talked about cluster to be personal disorders at times with the victim mentality. Now, what's interesting is um, the, the the narcissist will will tell, like I said, will tell you what they think they about themselves and you are. Now, what I believe the way to expose what's happening here and solve it, first of all, is to incorporate another cluster to be personal disorder, and that's the histrionic. They are the attention seeking. Like to be the, ten, the centre of attention, they like I said, they lie, play victim. They are, they're also very vague. So, for example, if they talk about the sense of that they are being victimised, you will could ask them. Okay, you could ask them and say why. Say they said they've been punched at a club, and you said well why, and they'll be very vague. They'll say well I don't know. Okay, so what happens is when the person comes out projecting political correctness says that's racist, you're a bigot, whatever. What you do is, you, is if you would talk to the histrionic and ask, why? How? And I believe uh, the response to that would mean if they, if they were to explain why they believe it's racist, they would reveal that they themselves have the racist thought. Uh, they don't admit the truth, so therefore they respond in a very vague manner, likely and say, well, I don't know. 
So they, it turns out they, they don't know why it's racist because if they they, 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 they kind of do in their head, they have the racist thought. But they don't want to reveal that to you. So you're able to expose it and shut it down there and then that's the same how. Okay. Now there's the uh, general observation of the left that they, uh, they're further regressing further into themselves. They're more adopting more radical politics, the identity politics, movement social justice. Uh, they seem to be further rejecting the idea that they should ever change, that their policies were ever wrong, that they could be wrong. Um, and also the, it seems to me that, that, I'm not saying this is true, but I'm putting out there, the worse this gets, the worse they become, this could, uh, if anything, worsen what's, what Nietzsche described as the devil side of man incorporated into the ideology of uh, which they believe in committing more terrible acts potentially under the belief that they were righteous to this new religion, the ideology. Okay, so this thing is that this social justice is higher than truth and this creates like a, a cognitive dissonance in these people's minds and uh, Nietzsche, one of Nietzsche's quotes was in the battle against monsters make sure that you yourself do not become the monster the more you gaze into the abyss, the abyss will gaze back or something along those lines so what I was saying is the basically what I believe you would say was the punishment for becoming and doing the very things that you say you are against is to detach from reality or become ill and it seems pretty clear that people who apply this uh, um, against this social justice idea, apply identity politics, apply Marxism, feminism, they they convince themselves that they are going to be oppressed. Uh, they they so they the, the way they engage in behaviours is they they basically seem to screw up their lives at some times and uh, reject any need to change. And basically, because of this victim victimhood, they believe that they are basically doomed. So they they're going to continuously be oppressed. So whatever they try, they might as well forget it. They're, they're, they're going to be doomed. So a lot of them, it seems, particularly the feminists, uh, end up uh, on antidepressants. Um, uh, a lot of times, continuously blaming the other person, blaming the patriarchy, blaming men, blaming capitalism, so on and so forth. So in the battle against monsters, uh, make, they themselves become the monsters and further stay into the abyss of their mind. Uh, that's I see that as a kind of punishment for the people who uh, who are becoming in increasingly being coming out of the universities and indoctrinated in Marxism or forms of Marxist critical theory. Uh, a lot of people I've seen. Unfortunately, some of which I've known personally have increasingly applied. Um, they are leftists. Uh, they they have increasingly applied that they could. What I've said before that they could never be wrong. Further become aggressive. Further radical. Uh, it's just their sense of self -dece deception is becoming uh, in increasing. Uh, that they believe that. I don't think it's. Some people might say it's a delusion. I'd say it's self deception. That they believe they, they would always be right, that they are the right side, they are the good side, they care about the poor, whatever. Um, some people may disagree on that if they go out, if these people to go out and red pill themselves on basic economics. Um, what's, uh, what's known as uh, evolutionary psychology is a good way to explain men and women, men and women, sorry, rather than identity politics. Okay, so. Yeah, this this all I think if I haven't already mentioned it, I'll just mention that the I think it was Peterson who wrote an article called the social justice illness. Often you will see in the, the viral footage that is going around of the social justice warriors, Marxist, anarchist, feminist. A lot of the time they are cluster B personality disorder. The way they behave is the body language, the aesthetic, the attention seeking, the erratic behaviour, the uh, black and white thinking. The abusive, the gaslighting, the 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 lying, um, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, uh, just not just cluster B, but also cluster A, paranoid personality disorder. Um, it's of course by um, very over, too, very, uh, overbearing parenting, way too overbearing parenting, causing the child to develop a paranoid personality. If I've already covered this, if I've already, I apologise, but. Um, they themselves perceive uh, uh, the strong sense of, of, of worth of self of rights, self self rights. They believe uh, they are people who are trying to be critical of them or being rude to them, um, and they they also believe that they are being victimised. Uh, they often believe, for example, in the questioning their partner's fertility, so they often think that their partner are cheating on them. That sort of thing. 
basically most of these personal disorders are caused by uh, some form of failed parenting uh, or could be caused by um, for example some father figure uh, so some male figure uh, back when the per uh, that basically let down the individual you find a lot of feminists unfortunately they themselves could could have been uh, victims of sexual abuse or basically have an abnormal relationship with their father where their father abandoned them this in return could cause personality disorder uh, a lot of the times they they are attracted to the black and white thinking the the the, the blame the judging collectively the totalization of the of the the the, the belief in the way they they feel of the sisterhood and that they could be uh, uh, in, in power and basically it's basically blaming the other people putting the finger at elsewhere the whole victim mentality okay so just to emphasize just to summarize sorry uh, these people who are politically correct, they, they do what seems to cluster to be narcissistic and antisocial personal disorder uh, projection. They say you are this. Um, in doing so, um, they themselves are making the decision in their heads that what you are saying is based on judging people collectively. They themselves are with the any, any racist belief or sexist belief or homophobic belief or transphobic belief they themselves make. And then they project onto you, so they gaslight you and say that you are doing this to sort of exonerate themselves from taking responsibility, point the finger elsewhere, and of course reject the, the idea that they need to change or need to that they are wrong. And uh, like I said, the way to expose it is just ask them why. And then they say they don't know. Because of course they, they in their head they, they think they do know, but they would have to admit that the racist belief is coming from them. Be good to just go in and further dissect their beliefs on uh, ex asking exactly how they accept, uh, expect to create a utopia entirely based on judging people collectively. Or you could say, you know, is it not morally wrong to judge people collectively? And if they're answering to the truth, they will say, yeah. And you, know, you say to them, that is, you know, that is discrimination. And you know, if you've actually read the literature, the the end result of all this applied social justice is to end up with the, the Marxist utopia, communism. Uh, if you read about it, what it incorporates to exist, uh, no one in the right mind would want to live in it. There's no, there's no freedom, no freedom of speech, no freedom uh, to choice, no freedom to believe what you want to believe, no free markets. Uh, it's authoritarian. You can't disagree with the government. Um, now it's funny because you ask many Marxists and feminists, and they'll say they disagree with political correctness, but in the Communist Manifesto, it clearly says. So under Marxism, the the government would all state state run the media. Um, the actual term political correctness comes from uh, Soviet Russia when the government broadcast uh, propaganda on over the media, over the TV, uh, I think I'm guessing over the radio, to uh, brainwash people to in, in agreement to, to be in agreement with the government. Uh, so it's, it's interesting. Also, the Black Lives Matter incidents, you see, they, they project the, the sorry, they, uh, they took on the, like an antisocial personality role. Uh, the they they themselves the, the political correctness is they're able to take something that is for example a true statement which is all lives matter and they believe that somehow contradicts social justice because it, obviously it's true but it's not social justice so even even though um, all lives matter and it's only only context you can taking is is to incorporate all lives of itself being the very very, its very nature against all all all, dis, all all discrimination all racism. It's not social justice. They believe all lives matter, can't matter until black lives matter. Completely bypassing the, the obviousness that all lives matter would incorporate black lives. And they're able to do this because it contradicts their social justice. So you say all lives matter, that's not social justice. That's not what they are saying. That's not judging people, black people collectively. You are contradicting their vision. Therefore, you are a racist. You are uh, the bigot. Uh, of course, what they are believing that themselves, what, uh, they're projecting that onto you. Like I said, approach them as the histrionic, say, why is it racist? Ask them to prove it. Just prove it. Maybe a good time then to red pill them. Or try. Many of them are erratic and antisocial, so uh, a bit, I'd, I'd advise you do that with caution. Um... Might not be the best idea, but yeah, that's uh, that's what you, I, I believe is going on. Uh, I'd just be warned that the further they get worse, the, the more more dangerous they could potentially get. They they seem to uh, become more self-deceptive. 
Um, the punishment, though, like I said, they further dysfunction in life. Uh, they do the very things like uh, they they want to legalize like drugs. Uh, they will do a lot of uh, drug taking. They believe in things like casual sex, um, uh, alcoholism. You'll you'll see them on the, the internet uh, talk about themselves and what they're interested in. They sound very disagreeable, very antisocial. And also, what's what's true to understand is with the victim mentality, often it's related to histrionic, antisocial, narcissistic. Is they have massive problems with empathy in other words they don't care they're not able to care so this in there in there taking on this devil side of man they are able to almost detach from giving a shit they will do whatever uh, what's increasingly coming out about black lives matter in america is they are doing some uh, devastating destruction on the belief that they are in fact righteous um they are gonna destroy what's actually happening is uh in return in response to all this if you actually ask a lot of individual black people, they reject, they have any interest in Black Lives Matter because, of course, the way they Black Lives Matter uh, behave in the long term is to cause uh, more discrimination against blacks and to re reinforce any harmful stereotypes against blacks. It's the same with the gay rights movement, it's the same with the feminists. Um, if you, if, even if you ask, funnily enough, a lot of uh, Muslim Muslims what the, how they believe, they interpret the radical Muslims, the extremists, they say the way they interpret them is like how we, many of us in Western society view the social justice warriors, the, the crazies. So I hope that's been informative. I think you, anyone would like to discuss, uh, put comments below. Let's uh, try some experimentation and uh, expose the, these people for what's going on in their heads. Shut them down. I just advise caution. They, they are, could be potentially erratic. So I'll just add the additional info that I thought might be relevant. If you are being approached by them and they are in a mob, I'd highly advise get the fuck out of there. Uh, if you, they are on a one-on-one -on -one basis and in front of you acting out um, and you can't get out of there, I think it would be good to really listen to... It's about a 10 minute video of a, a very good psychologist called Dr. Ross Rosenberg and he has developed what is known as the Observe Don't Absorb Technique. And this is how to deal with people who uh, you can't win with, who are erratic, who are acting out, who are gaslighting you, or uh, uh, being abusive, uh, projecting all this crap onto you. Observe, don't absorb technique. It's, it's on YouTube. It will help also if you are uh, ever in a, an abusive relationship. Um, 